everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to week three of our 2022 fall crochet along. We are making this gorgeous warm vanilla toffee cowl. This is a super cozy piece that you can wrap around you. It'll stay put because it's seamed. You don't have to worry about scarf ends falling down. It just pops right on. It comes down low in the front to give you full coverage if you have a jacket that's zipped up. And it kind of lays around your shoulders, almost like a shawl in the back without too much bulk. Now you can also, um, like I have here, you can wear it up tall with straight sides or you can fold it down. I like to fold it down and give myself a little bit more coziness. Um, so last week we learned how to crochet this basket weave stitch that uh, we used for this piece. And we had a rectangle. Just as a refresher, a rectangle is 14 inches wide. Now this is seamed, so you have to kind of visualize it, but this is 14 inches wide, and the length of our rectangle is 36 inches long. Today, we're going to be taking our rectangle, and you'll see the open rectangle in a minute. We're gonna seam it together. We're gonna to take our rectangle, and we're gonna fold it in, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna seam it up with a very simple whip stitch, and then we're gonna do some finish work, weave our ends in and such and our piece will be complete. So this crochet along just flew right along and we now have this gorgeous piece. You can wear it all winter long, all through fall and all winter. Um, this is a gorgeous fall color, but it also looks like, um, has like a gold or brass color too, which would be very pretty into the winter as well. Um, the yarn that I'm using, just as a refresher, we use 600 yards of worsted weight yarn. Week one, we talked about all that in more detail. And we used a six millimeter J hook. You don't need your hook today. We're just gonna be using some uh, needle and some scissors. So let's jump right in, get this seamed up and all the finish work, and then we'll have a gorgeous piece. Now as a reminder, next week, our week four of the cow, we are gonna be doing a recap. So on the blog, I'll take all the parts, week one, week two, week three, um, the written instructions and week one, week two, week three of the videos. And I, I like to put them all in one post. So if you go back, a lot of you like to remake this stuff and make uh, more than one. If you wanna revisit it any time, it'll be on one handy post. And I'm gonna share that next week once everything's wrapped up. So let's jump right in, get this finished up, and then you can be wearing your cowl as soon as possible. So let's get started. So last week we finished our gorgeous basket weave stitch rectangle. It looks fabulous and now we're gonna put it all together. So for today, you're just gonna need your tapestry needle and a pair of scissors to get started. We don't need our crochet hook anymore. We did all the crochet part. So we are going to now um, seam it together. So last week when we finished up the crochet part, when we fastened off, we left a long tail, like 24 inches long, just to give us an extra bit of space. So what we're gonna do is you wanna lay your rectangle down and we're gonna sort of fold it in on itself, okay? We're gonna take care of all the ends when we're finished too. We have a lot of ends. So what we wanna do is bring the sides in and then one of these points here, one of the bottom points, we're gonna bring it down like this slide it down so that this side edge is gonna connect with the edge over here, okay? And we're just gonna seam this area. So um, it's very handy to have a long tail right now because we can just take this tail and we can just seam it right up. Now, the neat thing about this stitch is it's completely reversible. So if you have a favorite side, go ahead and pick it now and uh, decide which, um, like if you want this to face out or if you want this to face out, okay? So then what we're gonna do is grab our tail, our long tail. Now I cut a lot extra just because I like to have a little bit more than run out. If you do run out, you can just tie another piece of yarn right on there and keep on seaming. It's just an extra step. So I like to just give myself a little bit extra. And you can see we have lots of ends and again, we're gonna take care of those later. So all we're gonna do is seam these two areas. Now we establish the point, that's gonna go down the front of you, like the front of the chest. And then, so we're gonna go down the side and we're gonna seam this here, okay? So what we wanna do is turn it and we're just gonna lay it flat, okay? And we're gonna go, just go right in. Now I like to, when I'm doing sides like this, now let me zoom in so you can see better. When I do corners like this, 
I don't like to go straight up and down. I like to kind of go down a little bit so you don't have this like, it sort of will have a dip in it like this if you don't go off to the side a little bit. So I like to do that. And we're just gonna take our tapestry needle and I, I think holding it flat like this is super easy. So you can see and everything stays aligned and lays nice and flat. So I'm just doing a very simple whip stitch. You can see I'm taking both uh, sides like a sandwich and I'm just going through both layers and all whip stitches is a, it's a pretty invisible seam and it's just kind of going to be a spiral for our work okay so I just want to go into both layers here and again our basket weave is reversible so you can uh, turn this right side out when you're finished but if you have a favorite side as you were working you know you might want to decide that and make that the in, inside or the outside, whatever side you were preferring, make that the outside or the public side of your work when you wear it. Um, because we're using the same color, this is very invisible. It just blends right in. Now I'm also, when I seam, I'm trying of each layer, I'm trying to pick up two loops of each layer, just because if you pick up one loop, it could um, kind of pull it out a little bit. If you go through two loops when each of your layers here, um, it will, it will hold it a little bit more securely and you won't get this like picked out loop when you wear it, okay? Because anytime you create a seam in your work um, and you wear it, especially these wearable items that are hard working like this and you're throwing them on and off and um, laundering them or hand washing them, they, you know, there is gonna be stress on the seam. So you wanna make sure your seam is nice and neat as you can see here and it's gonna be strong. You want to make sure you're, um, like, like as you can see here, my stitches are pretty close together. Um, and I'm just doing a really nice, neat seam here, okay? So I'm going to continue with my seam all the way up to the top here where, where my corner um, ends. And then what we'll do is we'll rejoin in just a minute and we're going to start doing some finish work. So just keep working your seam until you run out of uh, one of your layers here. So we're going to go all the way to the top and then here's where it ends, okay? Now our neck will continue. This is gonna be the neck opening, but we're gonna stop right here where our one side runs out, okay? So keep going with your beautiful seam, keep it nice and neat, take your time, and we'll rejoin in just a minute. All right, we've brought our seam all the way up, and now we're at the very top here. And we're gonna get this tail just out of the way for a minute, and just make sure when you're ending, just make sure everything's nice and neat because this will be a, um, an area where your neck will be and we'll, you'll be folding it down. So you want it to look nice and neat because it's, it's sort of like a focal point, but you also uh, want it to be strong so that it can hold. So we're just gonna go in that top part right there and just get that last stitch. And then I like to just do a couple more just to make sure it's nice and strong. And then what you could do, if you have a tail up here like me, you can just simply tie them together. Um, if you don't, you can just create a strong knot. So let's grab our tails and either do your strong knot or tie them together like I'm doing. Okay, so everything is seamed up. The last thing we have to do, let me just trim this because it's a little bit long. It'll be easier to weave in and manage if it's shorter. So let me just zoom out here our stitch our our seam rather looks very nice we have some some tails to weave in like i mentioned but our piece is done and it looks great now you might need to kind of straighten out this this seam sort of if you're if you have the point going down the front of you the seam is sort going to sort of sit on your shoulder a little bit and then you can of course fold it down and kind of style it up a little bit and it looks gorgeous so let's deal with the ends and then our piece will be complete. Okay, I'm just gonna grab something random in the middle here. Um, just to weave the ends, you wanna just thread your tapestry needle and then just go in. Now again, this is reversible. So try to stay in the middle of, um, and I have my hand underneath so I don't accidentally sew it together. So, uh, whoops, and it popped out. So what we wanna do is just, and having your hand underneath uh, will help guide your needle as well. So we just want to kind of go in between the plies of the stitches and when I do tails, when I weave my tails in, I like to go in one direction and then come back in the other direction. 
Just kind of work it in the best you can. Just like that, pull it through. And then you can just take your scissors and give it a little snip. So I have several here because we used um, several balls of yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all my ends woven in and then when we rejoin, our piece will be complete. So we've woven all of our ends in and everything looks absolutely beautiful. Now again, like I mentioned, you can kind of roll this down. I kind of like that look and it looks very pretty and it makes it a little cozier up around your neck. So our crochet along is complete. Now next week, we always have a kind of a recap where I'm gonna put all of the um, blog posts and all of the videos on one post. All parts of the crochet along will go in one post so that you can see everything in one place. A lot of you like to make things um, multiple times. So um, I'm gonna put them all together and it'll kind of just be like one recap post. So I hope you enjoyed this crochet along. And again, if you haven't joined the Ravelry group and the Facebook group, definitely hop on over there. It's a great place to connect with other makers. And as you finish your piece, you can show off your work. We all love to see what you've made. So that is how you crochet the warm vanilla toffee cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.